right, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ, blessed is Captain Paolo to my right. Officer Daniela. All right, it's another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. Today's topic, bruh, is going to be forgiveness in marriage. I'm going to say it again. Forgiveness in marriage marriage all right so i'm gonna try to get this in 15 minutes if i go over it may be a part two all right and the reason why i'm going over this is a lot i've been having a lot of councils uh i've been seeing a lot of people from other places or whatever the case may be it's so dang hard to forgive the person that you're married to it's so hard to forgive them all right this is the person that's going through the trials and tribulations you know with with you together Y'all sleep next to each other every night. Y'all have y'all bear children with each other. All these things. Y'all have money problems with each other, but when it's good, everything is cool. But then again, y'all have a simple misunderstanding or a simple something happen. One day somebody have a bad day. And then that can ruin. That'll, that'll take freaking years off of y'all dang marriage because now y'all can't forgive one another. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's a problem. We're supposed to be in this truth, keeping the commandments, showing the example, forgiving those uh, that have came against us. It's people that even forgave people that, in, that in, uh, molested them in years ago, rape or uh, whatever the case may be, cheated back in the day or whatever the case may be. Whatever the scenario is of where that you were hurt, both male and female. You forgive those people, but then again, when it's the person that you're sleeping next to, going through trials and tribulations, the person you want to spend the rest of your life with, you can't forgive them. Right. That is a problem. Right. All right? And that's the reason why we have a lot of issues in our community, because we can't get right with each other. Society have told us that, listen, the black man and the black woman should not be together. That's what society is portraying to us because why? They take the dad out the home. That's all our kids know. That's all they see on TV. The mama raising the child. That's what Esau implanted into our people. And now we really believe that, that narrative. Right. But guess what? We in this truth, we are the examples. We got to show these people the example that we can be in the household and be successful at a marriage. We've always been before. So we got to take that back. So we got to start understanding each other, all right? Being there for our spouse. Remember, we're one flesh. What happens to you happens to your wife. Right. What's yours is your wife's. Vice versa, or whatever the case may be, all right? So we're going to get into something. It's going to be a little different. I ain't going to go through all the marriage scriptures. I'm not doing that, all right? But give me uh, first Peter's, I mean, first Timothy's chapter 3. 1 Peter's. Chapter three. All right, some of y'all gonna be mad at me, but I don't care. I have, I don't care at all. But it needs to be said. Some of y'all gotta get y'all minds right. Y'all gotta learn how to sit down and communicate with your spouse, man, and get the thing sorted out. Quit playing game. Quit being a dang baby. Quit being a kid. Grow up. Grow the heck up man up in your relationship and get it right. Alright? You got it? Uh, verse 4. Uh, start at verse 2. Verse 2. <clears throat> First, Timothy, First Timothy. Verse 1, matter of fact. Chapter 3, verse 1. Uh-huh. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. So if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a great work. All of us in here want to be prophets of the Most High God. At least we portray to be, right? We want to be leaders in the community. We want to uh, compel our brothers and sisters in to come into the truth to keep God's commandments. We're desiring that position, all right? But it comes with certain stipulations with that, certain responsibilities that we must uphold and keep, all right? Come on. Verse 2. Uh -huh. A bishop then must be blameless. But you got to be blameless, though. You can't be all into all this different mess. Your name can't be up in every conversation when some issues happen. You and your relationship is always on the chopping block in the school. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all got issues, problems. No, you got to be blameless, man. Get your stuff together. Come on. The husband of one wife. Of what? One wife. So you're only supposed to have one wife. Why? Because we are the examples. 
we supposed to have one wife, all right? Not this multiple wives stuff. Hey, some of, some of, some of y'all can't even take care of one wife. I don't want to take care of multiple wives. Right. Get, your, get one wife together first. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Come on. Vigilant, uh -huh. sober, uh -huh. of good behavior, uh -huh. given to hospitality, okay. apt to teach. Come on. Not given to wine. Not given to wine. Come on. Nor a striker. Not a striker. Come on. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Uh-huh. But patient. But what? But patient. You got to be a patient brother. You got to be patient when you desire this because you're going to be put in situations to where your characters need to be up to upheld. Where you're going to be in situations where you got to have patience. All right? You got to have patience to learn how to deal with the matter. You got to have patience with people. Some people are a little slow learners. Some people are going to come around to it. And some people just get it just like that. So you got to be wise enough to have patience in different situations. Come on. Not a brawler. Not a brawler. Come on. Not covetous. Uh -huh. not, not covetousness. Here's the part I want. Come on. One that ruleth with his own house. He rules his own house. He put, he set down the rules. He put his foot down. You are the vanguard of your household. It ain't your wife. It's you. You set the rules there. All right? Come on. You set the tone. When you come into your household, if you got a snobby or you mean-spirited, the whole household is going to be like that. Right. You come in every day with a dang mean spirit, hateful spirit. It's because at work something happened, but then again, you come home, you put all that stuff on your wife. You mad at the kids. That ain't the spirit to have. All right? Come on. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. Having his children in subjection to all gravity, meaning you, you got everything in check in your household. All right? Especially the children as well. They're doing what they're supposed to do. They ain't up, up uh, looking at freaking YouTube, watching twerk videos on the tablet. Man. They know better. These kids know better. Right. They know not to look at YouTube. They know not to do this crazy stuff. You got to put that fear in them. All right? Come on. For if a man not, uh, know not how to rule his own house. Now, if you don't know how to rule the house that you live in and set the rules in, come on. How shall he take care of the church of God? How the hell are you going to be able to tell other people that? How are you going to um, lead other people when you can't even lead your own household? You can't even get your whole household in check. Oh, the brother's strong when it comes to the school, but when he at the house, he a little baby. He, don't know, he, he gets mad at everything. He don't know how to deal, he don't know how to deal with his wife with a, according to knowledge. Only thing he knew is how to call her a B. Or call out outside a name because that make him feel good. You don't know how to deal, sit down with your wife and speak to her and, and, and figure out what's going on with her. How can we make this better? This is the direction we need to go to. We need to communicate more. If you desire a bishop, you got to be able to do that. Right. All right? Hey, Cap, can what's I add up? something to that? Yeah, go ahead. We just, we just read it. Uh, in verse 3, it says, but patient. Yeah. You have to be patient like men dealing with their wives or wives dealing with their men because that, that partner know how to push your buttons. Oh, yeah. Even if you're trying to sit there and correct and the word, the scripture's coming out, you're going strong, but they know how to push your button and it can throw you off. It can make you angry, but you have to be patient in order to, in order to get that message in, into, that part, into that person's head. Like, this is what we're going to do, thus said the Lord. And then when it said, um, if you don't know how to rule your house, like Cap said, if you're getting frantic or you're throwing a tantrum because that person is not listening to you now, you, you, can't, you, can't, be, you can't be like that, still trying to teach out in the streets. You're good teaching on the streets, but you can't teach at home. Right. You, get, you can put all the scriptures to somebody that ain't in the truth, but when it comes to your wife, you don't pull nothing. Right. To build your wife up and to use them scriptures. Brother, you ain't keeping the commandments. You ain't doing this. You ain't doing this. But then again, you ain't on your wife. You ain't building your wife up. You ain't using the scripture when it comes to building your relationship up, your marriage. That's a problem. Give me, uh, give me Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. 
Ephesians 5. I'm going to start at verse 31. Let me get it right quick. You got it? Yes, sir. Go ahead and start reading. It's the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 31. Uh -huh. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother uh -huh. and shall be joined unto his wife. Come on. And so they, he's supposed to leave his father and mother. So this is when you come into marriage, all right? When you choose to get married. A lot of people in this truth, they do what? They either come in married or... They come into the body single and they end up getting married. All right? Nine times out of ten, the people that come in that's married, that been together for years, they don't have a lot of problems. I've been noticing they don't have a lot of problems. Here and there, yeah. People that been together seven to ten years plus, they don't have that many problems. Maybe here and there. It be you new ones. <laughs> <laughs> it be y'all that come in the super duper Israelite brother and sister and y'all get married and then three months out y'all don't even want to be with each other no more y'all didn't listen to none of the proven stage counsel y'all don't want to get counsel you got married you got or you got counseled all the way up until you got married right. and then after that you don't want to hear nobody else's mouth right. you got it all you got it all figured out it be those that be having all these problems. Fresh in, less than a year, and you're talking about, oh, I want to separate. I don't like him. You kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's been people that came into this truth by themselves and their spouse didn't believe for a year or two, sometimes more. But guess what? They end up winning that spouse over into the truth. Right. Because they show what? Patience. They actually abused the scriptures and applied it. The spouse actually seen the change in their husband or in the wife. They seen the actual change in them, that the scripture was changing them, converting their soul. But you newbies, y'all got y'all think y'all got it figured out. And you wonder why y'all have a lot of problems in this truth and with your marriage. You don't want to apply nothing to your marriage. When things get a little hard. You don't know what to do about it. You don't seek counsel. Or when you do, you don't want to listen to it. You know better. But we're going to get into that. Come on. Read on. And shall be joined unto his wife. Uh -huh. And they too shall be one flesh. Because y'all now are one flesh. That is you. Y'all one flesh combined. Y'all in this together. Ain't no you, you and I that split up or whatever. Y'all one flesh. Right. Y'all one flesh, all right? That's why the scripture said a wicked, a wicked woman is given to the portion of a wicked man. Y'all one flesh. We wonder why y'all got a lot of problems because both of, of y'all are wicked as hell. And y'all want to point the finger at the other one. He got the problem. He got the problem. But then again, behind the scenes, you the devil. You the devil. You the demon. Right. You know what I'm saying? But then again, when you out there, when you're, telling, when you're telling us this, this is what's going on in your household, you're doing all this evil. You don't want to put out the stuff that you're going through. You don't want to put out the stuff that you, that you say and do wrong. You're dealing deceitful too. So it ain't, just, it ain't just him or it ain't just her. It's you too. It's both of y'all. Both of y'all got issues. Come on. Verse 32. Uh-huh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Uh huh. It says it's a great mystery, all right? Great mystery. Meaning what? You're going to go through trials and tribulations with your spouse. Y'all going to go through things. Listen, if it, was, if it was one or two scriptures that can end all marriage strife, bruh, you think all of us would have used it by now. <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> Shoot. To let me know what those scriptures is. If you got it all figured out in marriage, right? let me know. Let me know if you don't need no counsel on what's going on or this and that. Let me know. If you got it all figured out, please sit down and counsel me. But guess what? You don't have it figured out because you're going to go through things. You're going to go through a lot of stuff. Sometimes the devil will attack your spouse to see where you at. Right. All right? It happened over and over again. Through our history, our forefathers and foremothers, it always they all the devil always attacked the spouse, and this is where you show your character. 
This will be sure your, your way of being patient and understanding the matter and being able to deal with your relationship right. All right? Because our people, man, listen. We're going to get into that. Now, from there, is that it on it? Yes, sir. I think it's a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. Verse 33. Verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you... A- Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even even as himself. Uh-huh. And the wife see the reverence her see that she reverence her husband. So, listen, y'all got to she reverence you, you got to make sure you treat her like you want to be treated. That is your wife. Most high God gave her gave her to you. You got to know how to deal with her. I can't do it. I can, I can give you all the scriptures and the advice in the world, but if you don't apply nothing that I tell you, at the end of the day, it's up to you to fix your relationship. Right. It's up to you to fix your marriage. Listen, <laughs> I'm going to go to that story. I don't know if I said it before, but listen, one time back in the day, I put my business out there. Well, not all of you know I'm not. <laughs> Where I had an issue, me and my wife had an issue. We like year two in, year two in, um, and we having issues. I call Deacon Abiel. I'm like, listen, bro. Mind you, we, we learn on the Deacon. So we know the marriage scriptures. We know what to use. So I go to talk to the <laughs> to Deacon. I'm like, hey, bro, we, I'm having issues, man. He said, Paulo, fix it. Hang up the phone. I'm like, what the hell kind of, what kind of, what kind of stuff is this? Is that the council? <laughs> that dude is genius, I guess. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't learn it out of it. <laughs> so maybe a month later, I called him with the same issue. He said, Palu, fix it, and hung up the phone. It was no conversation at all. Basically, Deacon answered the phone and said his words, and, and that was it. But it clicked in my mind. Can't nobody fix my relationship but me. I'm the man of the household. I dictate the vibe that goes on in my household. And you men got to do that too. But you don't do that. With, with some evil, wicked stuff. Wicked stuff. All right? Don't do that, man. Don't be trying to destroy your wife. Your wife is a little frail. Little, I'm not talking about in, 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 in posture, but emotional and et cetera. And you use that to your advantage to talk down your wife and beat her up. Right. And then you're wondering why she don't want to lay down with you. You wonder why she don't make she don't want to cook you no food no more because you got the devil on you. She's emotionally detached from you mm-hmm. because of how you act. You gotta fix that. I can't do it. Don't call Captain Palu. Hey man, can you, I mean I need I need no. You fix it. You know what to do. You fix it. Oh, we've been over this before. Right. Come on. Is that it? Give yes. me uh, give me First Peter's three. Give me First Peter's chapter three. And this is what's be happening, man. This is what be happening. Give me First Peter's three. We're gonna get into the forgiveness part. Like I said, we probably won't get to it'll probably be a part two. You got it? Yes, sir. Come on. Verse one. Uh verse seven. Verse seven. Uh-huh. Uh first Peter chapter three, verse seven. Come on. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. You gotta dwell with your wife according to knowledge. You should know your wife by now. You should know how to deal with your wife. You should know how to use the, the scriptures to build up your wife. You should know how to use the scriptures to correct your wife. You got to deal with your wife according to knowledge. All right? Come on. Giving honor unto the wife. Uh-huh. You got to give honor to the wife. A lot of times, we don't do that as men. We don't give any honor to our wife. We don't, we don't tell them, great job. Thank you for doing this. You know what I'm saying? It really ain't. Some of, some of us, most of us, most men really ain't really in our nature to be like that. But listen, it don't matter. We got to do it. All right. We got to show appreciation to our, to our spouse. All right. Come on. Giving honor unto the wife uh-huh. as, unto, as unto the weaker vessel. Uh-huh. She is the weaker vessel. Something she can't handle. Something she can't handle on her own. You got to be the backbone to make sure that everything is done correctly. Come on. And as being heirs together uh-huh. of the grace of life. Come on. That your prayers be not hindered. That our prayers be not hindered. But come on. Finally, uh-huh. be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. We supposed to have compassion one for another. 
All right? That's why she's your spouse. Remember, when you first met, everything was all good. Right. Y'all was cool, kicking it. Why years later, it can't be like that? Because y'all got comfortable with each other. Y'all stopped dating each other. Y'all don't even go out to eat. Y'all don't go hang out. Y'all don't communicate. You just go to work, come home, wear my food, and that's it. You got to communicate with your wife. All right? Come on. Love as brethren. Love as brethren. Come on. Be pitiful. Uh-huh. Be courteous. Uh-huh. Not rendering evil for evil. Now, that one right there. Not rendering evil for evil. And that's what happened into these marriages, bro. One person do something, you get irritated. Oh, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something, too. And then now y'all back and forth. Now y'all hate each other. Now it's a grudge. Now it's a grudge. Now you like, all right, yeah, we had an argument yesterday. I called outside a name. But I'm like, you know what I'm saying? What's, what's good? What we doing tonight? She's like, nigga, I, I think we ain't doing, I'm going to sleep tonight. Right. That's what I'm doing. Right. And you wondering, you just called her all outside a name. Now, of course, you're supposed to give, you're not supposed to keep nothing from your husband. But think about it. You, some people would just be making stuff kind of awkward. You rent an evil for evil. Y'all going back and forth. And then sometimes it'd be the wife. They'd be pressing the buttons. And then you do the same thing. And now y'all back and forth. Now for a week it's quiet. Y'all ain't even speaking to each other. And y'all stay in the same bed, stay in the same house. Y'all don't even speak to each other for a week or two. Hey, Cap. It, it gets me when somebody says, when you say, um, I wish I never married you. Oh. Or I don't want to be with you. Oh. You say those things. You go to that point to do a low blow, but then the next minute you're ready to snu- uh, cuddle up. Yeah, what's up, baby? You okay? What's, what's How going can on? you do that? Uh, that? You evil. I'm going to put it real. You evil. You evil as hell. Put it straight up. You evil for doing that. All right? You got to learn how to deal with each other. Some of you sisters be doing that too. Y'all be pressing them low bowls too. All right? Don't do that. Come on. Not rendering evil for evil. Uh Uh-huh. Or railing for railing. Railing for railing. The same thing. Y'all be going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to where y'all don't like each other no more. Now your marriage is in jeopardy. Y'all don't want to be with each other. Or one of y'all want to fix the marriage and the other one is too fed up now. Right. You're like, no, nah, I don't really want to be with him. I don't want to be with her right now. Now the devil is in y'all relationship. The devil is in there and, and got y'all questioning y'all own marriage. Y'all bear children with each other. There's no infidelity. So what the hell y'all going to do? Y'all, you're in. Y'all talking about separating. Come on. Really? The hell is wrong with you? Y'all ain't been through nothing yet. Right. People done been through way worse, and they figured it out. Right. You got to do the same thing and stop trying to give up. Because when you do give up, guess what happens? You end up falling out the truth. That's what's going to end up happening, and that's what the devil want. Come on. But contrary wise, uh-huh. Blessings. Knowing that ye are, are, are there unto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org